On this channel, I specialize in making really complex looking images easy to create. So just follow along with my step-by-step -step tutorial of this painting and you will amaze yourself. So as with all my tutorials, I'm using the app Procreate on the iPad, but you can probably apply a lot of the process and technique to other tablets and whatever app you happen to be using. Having said that, within the Procreate app, I've opened an A4 canvas, which is 297 by 210 millimeters at 300 DPI. And I'm also gonna be using the Procreate brushes that come free with the app. Within airbrushing, I'm gonna be using the soft brush at the top of the list, also the medium brush, near the top of the list. And I'm also going to go down to the organic section of brushes and using the Rainforest brush too. I've not changed any of the settings on those brushes, so they will just be the default settings for each. In terms of the colors, I've already pre-selected some colors in this area. Each of the colors has what we call a hexadecimal code attached to it. And each of those codes is listed down in the video description. So you can take a note, type them into this section here and press enter. The color appears up here and you can piece it together yourself. Or alternatively, to save you some time next to the codes in the description is a link that takes you to my Patreon page and you can download the color file for free there. If you like this kind of tutorial, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe and also the bell notification to make sure that you are notified of future tutorials like this. And with all that said and done, we're going to get started. So on layer one, we're going to go to our first colors, top row, first color, and we're just going to drag that color so it flood fills the entire canvas. We'll create another layer. We're going to go to the colors and the middle color on the top row. And with the soft brush set to 2% size and 60% opacity. In this top section, I'm going to start bringing in some shapes just across here. We're going to do a line initially, kind of across, maybe like a fifth to a quarter of the way down. I'm just going to keep it quite textured, some dashes. There's no precision here at all. It's just a general kind of getting some texture in there initially. Then I can take it upwards too. It's just very flat initially, that purple color. So we just need to create some subtle textures in there. And then when we start going in with a brighter color and picking out some real crisp textures, it's easier if there's just a groundwork of something to look at and just inspire you. And then, and then below that, I'm gonna put a band about 10% size just a, a little way below we'll do a stripe across and then maybe maybe double it up in fact and that's laid the groundwork for the other things that we're going to add okay i'm going to create a new layer i'm going to change brush to the organic rainforest brush and the colors i'm going to use the last color on the top row i'm going to put the strength up to 60 no 70 percent actually and about three percent size and then in this upper region i'm just going to start placing in some blobs to represent some little prominent cloud features, something like this. And then I'm gonna reduce it down to the lowest part of 2%, just to refine that as it gets towards the edges and maybe it stretches out a little bit. And you can just go in there and add some fine tune, smaller shapes that just kind of float around the edges of these blobs. Give it a little sharpness around the edge, define those areas a little bit more. Maybe we could have some stretched out forms maybe some bigger ones over here as well so let's increase it back up so three percent over the side if we want to add some slightly bigger ones again and then back down again to control the detail even to the one percent if necessary just to really fine tune the edges even the one percent if you just keep using it in a kind of dash or series of dashes and build up that shape you can do a mixture of both we don't need to do too much back up to the 2%, maybe just create some extra shapes in here, something like this. Okay, so I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna put that underneath the layer that we've just created. So it's layer four, but it goes underneath layer three. And the blend mode, which is represented by this little N, if we tap on that, is set to normal by default and you can scroll down and change it to add. You know it's selected because it now has a little A. I'm gonna change to my airbrushing soft brush. I'm also gonna to change to this first color on the middle row. 
I'm going to have it at around 2% size and 15% strength opacity. And initially, I'm just going to trace round some of these shapes so you can zoom in a little bit. I don't zoom in very much in these tutorials. I'm more about creating the overall effect. And then you can spend the time adding more crisp details if you want. I'm just going to go around the edges of this cloud that we've just created just a little bit. Certainly in the center region anyway. Not necessarily as it gets towards the edges, but just on this one that's very much more in the foreground or in the center focal area, then we're just gonna trace around it a little bit. So I'm tapping lightly initially, just going around the top and the bottom. So it's just a little bit of highlight that's touching around the edges of the shape. The sun is obviously in the very far distance and behind these clouds. And as we see it behind the clouds, it just creates a halo, like an illumination around the very edge of these forms. So if we just continue to trace around it a little bit, top and bottom like this initially. Okay, so I'm gonna to continue to use this brush just to add some extra texture maybe in the distance. So not necessarily traced around the other cloud shapes anymore. So we're at the lower part of 2% and still at 15% opacity. And I'm just creating some taps some blobs some extra things in the sky break away little parts of that texture above and below and same over here just create around and surrounding the areas we've already created just some little anomalies extra little points of texture maybe over here it can just disperse and stop something like this i'm going to change color to the yellow in this area around here i'm going to start adding some of that yellow effect as well now the yellow is quite a lot stronger in terms of the color, so just go carefully with it. Just focus around this region where the sun is going to be initially. I'm still just tapping it in, so it's slightly broken. We're adding it, but we're not adding it in a smooth, consistent line around it. It's going to just be textured in there a little bit, just for these areas initially. Okay, let's create another layer. And it's still crucially underneath the dark cloud layers. I'm going to Switch to the medium brush. I'm going to have it at around 7% size and 100% opacity. And I'm going to use the yellow now to identify where the sun is going to be. So I'm going to put it here. And just tap a few times like this where the sun is going to be. And then I'm going to go to my adjustments, blue, and just turn it up to 100% like that. And it's not really the right kind of yellow, but it doesn't matter because we're going to go over it with the white. Same layer, but I'm just reducing it down to the 6% now, size, still at the 100% opacity, and just aim for the middle and tap it in enough times just to fill that yellow area. And if you have to just sort of wiggle it around so it, it eliminates the majority of that yellow, then do that like so. And I'm gonna create a new layer on top. So click the plus symbol. Again, we're going to change the N to the add. We didn't need to do that for the white layer. It was just pure white anyway. But for this, we do need to change it again to the add and back to the soft brush, back to the first color that we used on the middle row. I'm going to put it up to 15% size and really low at 10% opacity. I'm just going to tap around the sun a few times. We can build up that glow. Keep tapping until it looks like it really is spreading and glowing from that area. We can then increase that up to 40% and tap a few more times in that area generally. Then we're gonna to switch to the yellow and turn the opacity even lower. I'm gonna put it at 2%. Even at 2% it's really quite powerful. So I'm just gonna use that now at the same size and settings just to extend that yellow across that whole area a little bit. So you can see I'm just zigzagging left and right a little bit, like so. And just a few times was plenty. I'm just gonna to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and blur it in a bit more, just to soften that in. So I'm gonna put it at 20%. Okay, we're gonna go back to the top layer and we're actually going to put it underneath layer six. And it just subdues and pushes it into place. I do need to go back to the top layer and create another layer on top of that and just ramp up some of these dark blues on that cloud layer however again using the soft brush i'm going to go back to the color i was using last one on the top row turn it down to the two percent 
So I can really control where I put it and up to the 70% opacity and just carefully start to reclaim the dark parts we want to just bring out and have a, as a contrast. We don't want to overdo it, but just bring them back in subtly, just tapping in lightly. Again, don't overdo this. I'm then going to go back to the middle colour on the top row and just go over this a little bit as well. Add some of that warmth in, especially as it gets just a touch closer to the sun. Again, we don't really want too much of this either, but we're just tapping it in a little bit more, just a touch. Try not to overdo it. I'm going to go back to the layer three. I had the initial dark cloud on it, and using this color, I might just create another band that cuts across in front of the sun as well. Why not? It's quite a nice effect just to have breaks in the sun. Get maybe back to the blue that we were just using too, just to really slightly darken that up a little bit more, something like that. And as we get further away again, it just transforms back into the blue. It's only when it really gets close to the sun that it starts to mingle with the, the glow that we've created and really works really nicely. Go back to that glow color and just add a little bit more highlight around that area too. So again, go back to the first color down to 2% and obviously back down again to the 15% roughly and just create some of the highlights around it using the warm color initially and also the yellow color. Any cloud that gets really close to the sun area is just going to be massively highlighted on edges. So you really need to go and spend the time just picking out their little highlights there with both the yellow and the warm colors just there. Okay, go to the top layer, create another layer on top of that. And I feel we need to add some contrasting dark colors at the very top. So go to the bottom row and the fourth color in, I think would be a good color. And we will go back to the organic rainforest brush. We'll have it at around 5% size and 70% opacity and just create some clouds that cut across at the very top. something like this. We want that broken edge. In fact, let's turn it up even bigger. So let's go for it 9% and cut across like that. Be careful not to obscure anything important that we've just created, but something like that. And then we'll go to an even darker color. So we've used the fourth, we'll go to the sixth color. And we don't need to change layer. We'll just perhaps just add a hint of it. We just want to create those contrasts. We don't need to do too much of that. And I think it just sets apart from the colors that we've just created and it works nicely in combination. Okay, we're gonna go back to the layer two. I had some of those initial cloud details and I'm gonna to go to the first color on the bottom row with the soft brush. I'm gonna put it to 10% size and 20% strength opacity and from this layer. I'm just going to build up that bottom section. We already had a bit of a stripe to begin with. And I'm just going to build that in, go over it a few times, just bring it out a little bit more. doesn't matter if it extends up a little bit into the sky. It's underneath everything anyway. Let's go over it a few times. We need to have that light color now because we're going to add some darker mountains that are going to contrast nicely with it. We'll stay below all the sun details because we want these initial mountains to be slightly subdued when they go near the glow of the sun. So it makes sense to have them underneath everything. So from that layer two, create another layer, go back to our colors. So we've used the first one. We'll go to the second color now and we're going to change to the medium brush. We'll have it at 2% size and 100% opacity. And it's 100%, so it doesn't matter if we lift the brush and go over it a few times, but I'm just gonna create a distant mountain up here, and then maybe some sort of subtle details in the, the background there. And just really go in there and create some small rises, peaks and troughs in that mountain area in the distance. We don't need to do too much there, really. Just the sense that there is something, and then we can drag and flood fill the remaining area, like so. Create a new layer. Go back to our colors. We've used the first two, so we're gonna go for the third color now. And I'm going to reduce it, and I'm gonna keep it 100% size, and it's gonna contrast 
really quite sharply, but it's fine because we're going to turn the opacity down just to make it a bit more subtle. But we're just going to go across, create an alternative, set of mountain peaks across here. Again, drag and flood fill the area below. And we'll actually go to that layer, tap on the N and reduce the opacity of that just to create a slightly more subtle shift. So I'm going to put it to about 25%. Create another layer with a plus symbol. Still on the medium brush. Again, we can create another mountain range. Perhaps that has a little bit more of a rise in this one. And it comes back down. Doesn't matter if it obscures some of the details we've just created. Drag and flood fill. Go to the end, reduce it a little bit more. This time, we'll still have it quite high, but somewhere around this 75%. Create a new layer. Do similar again, but slightly lower down. So another, and it, you can see now it's adding lots of subtle layers without really changing the color much. We can just drag and flood fill that lower area. And we'll leave that at 100%, create a new layer. Go back to our colors, use the fourth color. And still at 100%, we can just create another detail in here perhaps. And as long as it's closed at either end, we can just drag it and flood fill quite easily. Create a new layer, go for the fifth color along, perhaps create another feature. And you just need to be a little bit inventive in terms of, you know, make sure they're not all completely the same. They need to cut above and below the other ones you've created, like so. Otherwise it does get quite boring. Create another layer. There's lots of layers here and that's better. We can go back into those layers and add some mist effects, as you'll see. Go to the sixth color along, getting much darker now. And we can just create some effects in here. Drag and flood fill again. You can modify these shapes later on, but we will create yet another layer. And almost at the last, the last color is solid black, so we're not quite using that. And then we just want to create some shapes in here for an area that's really a lot closer. So we're not gonna go all the way across for that. Then maybe for the black layer, we'll just do one that really cuts in front down here, like so. Now I'm gonna switch brush to the organic rainforest brush. And for this black layer, I'm gonna turn the black up to 100% on this brush. And staying on the same layer, I'm gonna to change to the organic rainforest brush. Put it at the 3% size and 100% opacity. And I can just, just along the top edge of that black layer, just create the sense that there's some foliage and trees, some more foreground details, so I can just rely upon this texture to create the effect of foliage. It's not particularly agonized over at all. It's just the sense. And if you wanted to, you could just add a flourish of it on both sides as well. Why not? And just soft focus it a bit. So adjustments, Gaussian blur, just a touch, just take the edge off. So I put it usually to about 2% is enough. So I've still got the black and this dark blue as one layer and I'll show you here. There is one layer and that's fine. I'm gonna to go to my colors and select the blue that was immediately before that. And staying on the rainforest brush, but at a less opacity. So I'm gonna put it to about 60% and put the brush size down to 2%. And on this area, I can just use it to bring in some textures that are generally gonna be quite subtle. Don't want to do too much of it, just a hint of it. And even that strength is, is too much really. So I'm gonna reduce that down to about 40% just allows me to tap in lots of little points of texture just to stop it looking too flat. And then really just sort of moving across this whole area just to create the sense that there's trees and details and texture taking place in that layer. And I can go along the top edge of it too just to soften in some of that. I mean, I could even go back to the initial blue that was up there and just similar to what I did along this top edge, put it back up to a strong percentage, so back up to about 80% maybe, and just create a slight hint of the kind of tree textures. Perhaps it needs to be even smaller, so we'll put it at the lowest part of 2%. Just move across that top edge, create some similar rough textures that we did along the black. Now it is more distant, so I wouldn't expect to have too much clarity on this texture. Just a little bit gives it a sense that there's more recognizable kind of tree textures there, which works better instantly. Back to the third color from the right, and I'm gonna to change to the 
airbrushing soft brush. I'm going to have it at 10% size and 20% strength. And I'm just going to add just a little bit of a touch of that color just at the bottom area. It's just to slightly give a mist at the bottom area, but not much. Then I'm going to go to layer 15. I have this. So if I just move so you can see it, I have this area. And on that layer 15, I must well stay on the soft airbrush for this. I'll do the mist layer first. Go back to my colors. I'm going to go from the fourth, from the right. And, and then keep the, layer, the properties the same with the brush. So 10% size and 20% strength. I can just chip away at the bottom of that layer. Just creates a slight variation between the top and the bottom area. Then I switch brush to the organic rainforest. Again, it's at the 2% size. And I'll put it back down to the 40% strength because I want to create some of those textures similar to what I did back there. So again, just points of texture just to stop it looking flat. And I can just move around randomly and just add points of texture. Not something you need to spend particularly long on. It's a subtle little feature, but it really does add depth to these mountain areas. And without it, it really is going to look more flat and less interesting. I can do it along the very top of it too. Don't need to worry too much. And I'm just going to long press on this smudge tool. And then when I go on the smudge tool, you see it's using the same texture, but on a smudge form. And I'm going to put the smudge size at 2% and 70% strength on the smudge. And I'm just going to go in and just rough up these top edges just a little bit, not too much. Just go along and just, we don't want a, a too sharp detail along that top edge. Something like that will do. I'm then going to go back through my layers, so layer 14, add this layer back to my colors. I'm going to go for the fourth from the left and back to my airbrushing soft brush. The settings are still the same, so I don't need to touch them or adjust them. And we're just going to bring that in just to soften the bottom edge. Again, it's just a hint of kind of like a mist that just separates the top edge of the mountain region that we're talking about and then the bottom bit as well. Just create some variation, which works really nicely. Again, shift to the organic and rainforest brush. It's still set to 2% size and 40% strength, which is perfect. And we again, we can just go in and create some points of texture. And then we can just scatter these around. Again, keep it quite random. You don't want to add an absolute ton of it. You don't want it to be super noticeable either. So press lightly and just create lots and lots and lots of this little points of texture. Just fast forwarding through most of this because it is just a little bit time consuming and you don't necessarily just want to watch me create dots in real time. And then again, back to the smudge tool. I'm going to put it up to 100% actually. Make sure it's at maybe 1% size now. And we can just go in and just push that top edge around just a little bit. Again, it's creating some more of that foliage kind of look, isn't it? Maybe suitably it's looking more kind of rainforesty. I don't know. Just along this top edge anyway. It is a tree texture, so it's perfect. Sometimes I'd use the smudge tool and put it on the airbrush. But I, think, I do think considering we are doing lots of trees, then having this set to the rainforest brush is appropriate. Back through our layers, so layer 13, let's just identify the layer. Yep. Back to the airbrushing soft brush. And we're gonna use the third color in and just a hint of that at the bottom, just to separate again the top edge from the bottom bit, just creates depth. Back to the organic rainforest brush. You should know the, the pattern by now. And then you can just add a few points of texture in here too. You don't need to change the brush settings. It remembers between flipping between brushes, which is the beauty of this app don't need to start again on the opacity and size as long as you just using a couple of different brushes you can flip and alternate between them and it's really useful again along that top edge go to the smudge tool still set at the same settings as before I don't feel the need to change that at all so push it up and down just to rough up that top edge on both sides and that's working nicely now anything that's more in the distance I feel it's going to be less obvious along that top edge in terms of tree texture, but we can start a little bit of more texture. So we'll go back to our layers, layer 12, which is here. Probably don't need to do too much with that. 
we'll go to it anyway. Go to the second color, go back to the airbrushing soft brush and just a hint of that at the bottom of that layer, not much, something like that will do. Again, just to create a lighter bottom area and then a darker top area. We may as well change back to the organic and rainforest. And just, again, don't change the settings. Just a few points of texture in there. I wouldn't do too much compared to the other areas, just a few points. And I'm not gonna to touch the top edge of this layer of mountains at all. I'm not going to use the smudge tool. So that will do for that layer. Layer 11 is a big layer there. Maybe go back to the first color and the airbrushing soft brush, same settings as previously and just at the bottom edge of this. Now we can just pick out soft misty glow at the bottom and then back again to the organic rainforest, same settings and really subtly now, I wouldn't add too much of this at all. Just lightly tapping in a suggestion that there is texture there too. Just feathering that in. So I'm pressing probably more lightly with this layer. I'm not gonna do anything with the, any of the mountain ranges below in terms of texture. This is the last layer where I'm gonna add any kind of sense of texture at all. But I am gonna to go to layer 10, back to my airbrushing soft brush and just chip away at the bottom edge. Doesn't need much at all there. And layer nine, I can probably leave as is. Okay, I'm gonna go back to layer two, click the plus symbol to create a new layer down here. I'm gonna change the properties to the add and with my soft brush, with this first color on the middle row, set to 15% opacity and 10% size. I'm just subtly gonna bring in a little bit more light at the bottom area here, not too much, just a little bit more like that. I'm gonna go back up to my layer four and with my airbrush still, I'm gonna turn it down to the 2% size, keep it at the 15% opacity and I'm just gonna start building in a little bit more tech. In fact, I'm gonna go lower than 2%. We'll go to the, or rather, I'll go to the very lowest part of 2% because there is quite a big difference between the top end of 2% and the lowest part. I just need to build in a little bit more of this texture into the cloud areas. Maybe we could have it extending a little bit further down. We've got quite a, an empty area of sky here, so let's add some more highlights and features, extend the drama of this sky perhaps a little bit further. It is one of the main focal points of this scene, so if we don't really bring it out and make it dramatic, then the rest of it falls a little bit flatter, so let's really ramp up what we've got here. So I'm just going around the edges, these clouds again, really made them a bit stronger even than I had before, why not go for it? Extend them a little bit further across here to maybe even bring some stripes and some subtle broken texture into this bottom region. Doesn't do any harm. And some just underneath here as well. Have some breakaway little points and have it mingling up here with these darker areas, just little bits. And then we'll switch to the yellow, stay on the same layer and especially around the sun we're really going to ramp up some of the yellow highlights around edges too. It's obviously more concentrated as it gets close to the sun. We really need to ramp up the yellow. Apply it in sort of dashes and dots still, like that. Maybe just a few breakaway little sections here as well. Okay, back up to layer seven. I was using this layer to add some slightly darker colors on top. And I'll continue that a little bit. So top colors, middle color, and still on the same brush settings, just push the contrast a little further. Go over some of these colors that just overlap the sun. Perhaps I'll just create another layer above that. Change the layer properties. I'll do blend mode to the add again. And I think I need to go for this middle of these bright colors with the soft brush. And just maybe go over one or two of these areas and really bring out a strong red glow as well. I think that will work nicely, like so. So I'm gonna to go to my top layer. I'm gonna to go to the fourth color on the bottom row with my soft brush set to 3% size and 10% strength. I'm just gonna bring down some of this color just to 
really nicely jut against the strong highlights there. I just want to make that contrast pop a little bit more. I think that will work nicely. And again, reduce it down a little bit further. Maybe we could just go over some of these cloud areas too. Make them a little bit darker in places. Again, pushing the contrasts. One last layer at the very top, layer 19. Change the properties from the normal to the add. Back to this color, second in on the middle row. Up to 15% size and low, maybe at about 5% strength. And I just want to slightly obscure some of that mountains. Just push it back a little bit. Let it be consumed a little bit more in the glow. Something like that. We can then go back to the yellow, just subtly. Reduce it down to 2% size, stay at the 5%. And we can just build in, in that bottom area, just a little bit more of a sense of stripes along that. So it doesn't just completely kill and flatten out everything at the bottom area too. Something like this. Okay, I'm gonna leave this tutorial here at this point. If you've enjoyed following along, please remember to hit the thumbs up and the subscribe and also the bell notification to make sure you are notified of all future tutorials like this. Thanks for watching, I shall see you back here soon. Bye for now.